Hey everyone, this is Prime. Thank you for tuning in for another exciting episode of Value Village Part 2, which I'll be showing toys uh, from the 2000s, the 90s, and the 80s. Let's get into this! Yeah! Our first toy that I'm going to show you that I got from Value Village. He comes from, uh, he was released in 2004 by Hasbro from the Star Wars, the original trilogy collection, Darth Vader. <laughs> that is just my impression of, you know, Darth Vader breathing through his mask. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Darth Vader, uh, he is the most iconic villain, and I would say probably science fiction history. Um, he is the most biggest villain in Star Wars. If you don't know who Darth Vader is, you've been living under a rock from the last since the, since 1977. <laughs> um, the the toy here, uh, he pretty much came with everything you see here other than he came with a lightsaber, the traditional red lightsaber he had in the movies. Um, as you can see, he looks pretty much identical to the original trilogy as this is part of the original trilogy uh, toy line from 2004 that uh, Hasbro um, reproduced. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Star Wars at all, uh, Darth Vader Originally, his original name was Anakin Skywalker, and uh, he was in the Star Wars lore. Uh, he was the Chosen One. Um, the the Force. Um, the Force is like basically um, if the the Force is almost like a cosmic or a spiritual entity. There's good and bad. So depending, you know, if depending on your religion, if you're religious, um, it symbolizes good and evil, right? Anyway, and then, but in the Star Wars, people can make their own decisions, as in real life. And anyway, so uh, he was born, and there's a, in the Star Wars lore, in the prequel trilogy, uh, that he was the chosen one. And he was gifted with, he could make all kinds of mechanical items when he was a kid, um, that's where he created R2-D2 and C-3PO. Um, and uh, so anyway, in episode three, um, when Anakin chose the dark side, he had a big battle between Anakin and, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, and then he got brut brutally uh, damaged from that fight. And the dark side, um, the Sith, uh, they found him and they created this suit to keep him alive and that's why he uh, breathes like that <sighs> Something like that, <laughs> right? So yeah, Darth Vader, um, you know, the Star Wars collection isn't complete without Darth Vader. Yeah! number two uh, comes from the Marvel Cinematic Universe from Hasbro from the year 2010 uh, from the toy line Thor Mighty Avenger Thor Power Blaster and while looking at the toy there you're gonna say oh well he looks like a G.I. Joe right well I mean he does look like a G.I. Joe I'm not gonna lie he, it's true he does look like a, a G.I. Joe but um, Hasbro also created G.I. Joe, so I guess they wanted to do a more of a G.I. Joe look for the toy. The toy originally came with, uh, if you look, if you see here on the sides there, it looks like it's broken off. Uh, there's something that would go there. But actually, they're like kind of like um, guns, I think. Um, I'm not sure why Thor would need guns, but it's like um, Asgardian technology, I'm guessing. <laughs> Cause it shoots like, um, 
like these blue missiles, so I'm guessing they're supposed to be like wind or, or something. And he's also missing, I don't have his hammer. He came with his uh, famous uh, hammer, because uh, Thor isn't Thor without his hammer, right? <laughs> uh, it could, it's part of who, who he is, right? You know, um, so yeah, Thor Power Blaster. Uh, pretty cool, I never had a Thor toy before growing up, so I was like, yeah, why not? At first, I thought he was a G.I. Joe when I first picked him up, because, you know, he doesn't have his hammer, right? Um, a little bit about Thor. Uh, he's been in four Thor movies. Um, Thor, Thor The Dark World, Thor Ragnarok, and Thor Love and Thunder. If you're a Marvel fan, you'd be familiar with <laughs> these uh, movies, and he's been in all four Avenger movies as well. Uh, Avengers, Age of Ultron, Infinity War, and Endgame. Uh, so he's uh, very popular, um, and uh, he's, a, he's also in the comics as a founding member of the Avengers, who is also created by the famous creator Stan Lee. So yeah, Thor, he's awesome. This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! <laughs> Toy 3 and 4, yes, I'm going to do both of them at the same time. Uh, I'm not quite sure the year or the manufacturer or even which toy line they are kind of like a, a dollar store knockoff or the knockoff. There's these two ninjas I got at Value Village. They look kind of cool at the time. Um, they're made in China. <laughs> I tried to do a search online for them uh, to see uh, if I could find any information on them. No luck whatsoever. So if you actually know um, what toys they are, what year or the make, um, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. I love to hear what your thoughts are on these two ninjas. And yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> they're great. They look good on my shelf. <laughs> Toy number five also comes from the Marvel Cinematic Universe from Hasbro from the year 2010. Iron Man. He comes from the Iron Man 2 comic series toy line. Um, he comes with clip snap on blasters they would fit on the arms there uh, and uh, yeah he does also look like he's the same size as like a GI Joe <laughs> um, I guess that year Hasbro wanted to do more looking GI Joes than actual action figures but yeah that's cool I mean I, I did have Iron Man growing up as a kid when I do find them in the house uh, that we're cleaning out through I'll add them to another um, video <laughs> for Epic Treasures, but uh, yeah, Iron Man, um, as you know, uh, he's Marvel, he was created by Stan Lee back in the 60s, and he was also, like Thor, a founding member of the Avengers, um, and in the movies, he's had three movies, Iron Man 1, 2, and 3, <laughs> uh, and then he's been in multiple uh, other movies within the MCU, including all four Avenger movies, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, um, and well, I guess a bit of Spider-Man No Way Home um, after he died. Um, sorry to spoil if anybody here hasn't seen it, but uh, yeah, if you haven't seen any of the MCU movies, go, go and watch them. <laughs> um, but yeah, Iron Man from Iron Man 2. Uh, the comic book series. Also, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, he, besides the snap-on blasters, uh, he also comes with a uh, comic book in the in the, in the, the original toy, uh, which you don't have. But you can see the picture on the screen. And yeah, Iron Man! Toy number six comes from Hasbro uh, from the year 2016. Falcon from Marvel. 
Uh, you can see this Falcon here. Um, Falcon, uh, if you're familiar with the movies, he's in a black costume played by uh, his secret identity is Sam Wilson, played by Anthony Mackie. Um, you're like, what? he's red and white. What's what's with that? Uh, in the comics, he was actually red and white. Um, and he also had a little bird, uh, a red bird, on his shoulder that he would use. He was his partner, basically. Um, and in the movies, they actually brought him, brought the bird into it, but they made the bird a robot instead of a real bird, right? Um, but yeah, Falcon, uh, he, this toy is part of the same toy set as the Incredible Hulk and Ant-Man from my previous video. As you can see on the screen, uh, another picture of the actual box set. Um, I got him, like I said, this video is all about Valley Village, so I got him at Valley Village. Uh, he's, yeah, Falcon. Uh, he can't obviously fly in the toy, because, you know, um, he's a toy. <laughs> but yeah, he, um, he, he, in the comics, and there was a cartoon show in the late 90s called uh, Avengers, uh, which was based off of the uh, New Avengers, so it wasn't, it wasn't just based off Cap, uh, Thor, and Iron Man. They were hardly in it. They were like the founding members, and so the show was led by Ant-Man the Wasp, but Falcon was one of the members on the team there. And yeah, Falcon. Falcon doesn't disappoint. Hmm. It's really important to me that Cap never finds out about this. Toy number seven uh, comes also from Hasbro from the year 2009 uh, from the toy line Marvel Universe Fury Files and uh, his main um, punchline I guess you say, like what he would say all the time when he's ready to take down bad guys, <laughs> it's clobbering time, the thing. Uh, he is one quarter of the Fantastic Four. Uh, he has been in a couple of different uh, Fantastic Four movies. Um, he's been in the most recent one um, a little while ago, um, which was a reboot, uh, which did horribly. <laughs> I didn't really like that version. Like, he didn't have any pants or anything in that. Um, and I don't know, just kind of dark and Fantastic Four is usually more lighter character. Though they did do Doctor Doom good on that. I gotta say about that. Um, but, um, then they made, and earlier on, they made Fantastic Four and Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, which, um, I know, some people didn't like, some people liked. I personally liked the first one. Um, I thought it was pretty true for the most part to the original Fantastic Four from the comics other than the origin story for Doctor Doom and the Fantastic Four was a little bit different. Um, well actually Doctor Doom was a lot different, <laughs> but I still liked it. Um, and it had the feel from the comics, it was a bit more cheesier, but it was more lighthearted. Um, it wasn't dark as like Batman or anything like that, um, but I, I quite enjoyed it. And there was a TV movie previous that I never actually saw. I'm not reading online. It didn't look that great. The thing looked horrible from pictures that I saw, um, which you can see on the screen. <laughs> you can agree with me there. But yeah, so this this toy of the thing, uh, if you can see here, um, uh, there's a little bit of color distortion in the, the legs there, um, which I believe I don't think that was there before. Um, but yeah, the thing, blue-eyed thing, he doesn't disappoint. <laughs> it's clobbering die. You must end the menace of Galactus forever. Nerds, I wanted the weekend off. Toy number eight also comes from the Fantastic Four. He's another quarter member of the Fantastic Four. Uh, he comes from the year 1996. Um, he is known for Flamon, the Human Torch. Uh, yeah, so he, like I said, he uh, is a McDonald's toy. Uh, actually, I, 
I know, I, I got them at, at Valley Village. <laughs> but uh, I had to look him up because I wasn't quite sure which toy line he was from. And I had a hard time finding him. And I was like, okay, well, let me just try McDonald's. And boom, I found him. <laughs> there was, it was a uh, toy set that you could get at McDonald's. That was him and then the Incredible Hulk. And the Hulk looked very um, from the cartoon or from the comics. Um, yeah, the, nothing, he was in good shape. Uh, nothing really bendable other than his, he can move his torso around. But it's a McDonald's toy. I don't expect much from McDonald's. Um, and in the movies, uh, he was actually played by Chris Evans, who later became uh, Captain America in the MCU. Um, and I just talked about the movies there uh, for the for the Fantastic Four. <laughs> so if you want to just go back, you can watch it there. But yeah, the Human Torch, flame on! Toy number nine comes from a galaxy far, far away uh, from Hasbro. I'm not sure what the the year was. It didn't say on the on the toy. And looking up, I couldn't find the exact toy. R two D two. Uh, now R two D two here. Um, as I, I did mention him before, uh, he has, he's one of the original characters. He's been around since uh, Darth Vader and Anakin was, was a boy <laughs> in the prequel trilogy and then the, also the original trilogy. He's also in the Clone Wars and he's in a little bit in the, um, the, the sequel trilogy, but definitely mainly in the first two trilogies and the Clone Wars, I think I'm guessing, if I had to guess, I'm guessing he is from the, uh, this toy is from the Clone Wars, I'm guessing. Uh, I couldn't find him to be for sure, but if you think you know, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, so, so I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I saw him in uh, Value Village and I was like, man, I need an R2-D2. So yeah, R2-D2. Toy number 10 uh, comes from the year 1994 by uh, toy manufacturer Playmates. Uh, the character is Maul. <laughs> and you're like, who the heck is that guy? It's not the Hulk or because he's green and purple. <laughs> uh, he is from the Wildcats toy line, which also had a uh, TV series. Um, I got him at Valley Village not knowing, I didn't really follow Wildcats, um, like I heard of them, but never had any toys growing up or never watched the show. Uh, in the 90s there was also a cartoon show called Wildcats and he was on there. He's actually a good guy. Um, he looks like a bad guy, <laughs> but he's actually a good guy. A uh, little backstory um, with the, the source material. Um, Wildcast was produced by a comic book company called Wildstorm, which then got bought out by DC Comics, so technically he is a DC character. <laughs> um, he's never been in any movies other than the cartoon show from the 90s. Um, and yeah, uh, so a little bit about um, the car back card story. Maul is a half-breed. He's half-human, half-alien, called the Kura Kuribim. Uh, I apologize for any Wildstorm uh, fans out there uh, if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Um, yeah, so he's a half-breed. He's part human, part alien, which is called Kuribim. Uh, and, uh, his, and he grew up, he was a farm boy. A country farm boy. Um, and when he was uh, 17 years old, um, by the way, his name is uh, Jeremy Stone. Um, and when he was 17, he was recruited into the Wildcats organization, and they were to they were able to unlock his uh, Caribbean alien side, uh, which manifests powers, and which turned him into this guy. <laughs> And he's kind of like the Hulk of it because the, the more the matter he gets or the stronger he, the more he fights, the more stronger he gets. So 
um, it get, my understanding is that if he sometimes it's hard to control how fierce, how strong he gets, depending on who he's fighting, basically there. Um, and uh, yeah, um, he you don't want to mess mess with him with <laughs> if you're in a dark alley or if you're a bad guy. Uh, he does come with, as you can see here, uh, he has like this claw. He, he's supposed to have two claws, right? Um, he also comes with a crowbar and I believe it's uh, power gloves. Uh, you can see it on the screen there, the, what he actually came with. Um, but yeah, he was a cool find. I've, I've never had any wild, um, wild cats toys. Never actually watched the show, so I'm kind of interested in checking it out. Um, it looks, uh, the cartoon, the animation style looks similar to like the Marvel shows um, back in the, in the 90s there. So yeah, Playmates. First time having a Playmate toy from the Playmate brand. Um, yeah, Maul. <laughs> Toy number 11 comes from the year 1988. Uh, he is from series 5 of the of Hasbro's Transformers Generation 1. His name is. Dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun. Yes, he looks like a shark with legs. <laughs> His name is Overbite. Rawr. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes I like to be dramatic. <laughs> um, yeah, Overbite, he is from the, the Decepticon team called the uh, Seacons, um, which which they all uh, form, they transform into water-related creatures, uh, and they can form into a giant called Piranacon. Kind of like Piranha, but, you know, <laughs> Piranacon. You can see a picture of on the screen what he, what he looks like. Uh, so yeah, he's missing his uh, two um, pink claws, and he also came with a gun that I uh, don't have. Uh, this is how he got him at Valley Village, and you can see on the, the fin there, that is Decepticon. Decepticon, I'm not sure you can see there or not. The lighting is not great here today, but I apologize for that. But let me transform him. Uh, he's pretty easy to transform. His head, if we move his uh, mouth up, his head becomes the feet. I'll just show you. Hopefully you can see it. Like that. And then the tail comes out. And let's see, there's his head there. And then the legs pop out like that, so he has some height to him. And then his hands just come out. His animal legs, or his his uh, arms, and there's his uh, fist there, and same with here as well. And voila! You got Overbot in robot mode. And then, yeah, and then, as like all the other combiner transformers I've talked about in the past and in past videos, his head would connect into the, the main part of Piranicon. Um, so he is definitely either a leg and arm, you can see on the screen there what he looks like. Um, but yeah, I love Transformers, as you can tell by the channel. <laughs> and um, I just want to thank you for tuning in. And just remember, if you find the vintage toys or toys that you like, collectibles, just remember, that's just Prime.